الله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الجر الميامين الذين أذحب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا صل على محمد وآل محمد Once again, mu'minin and mu'minat, we thank Almighty Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala for making it possible for each and every one of us to witness the first day of the holy month of Ramadan. We pray to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala the way we witnessed this first day to make it possible for us to witness the last day of this beautiful holy month. Inshallah, mu'mineen, as you always do in the holy months of Ramadan, after Salat al-Asr, we have a bit of discussion to remind one another of Allah and the teachings of Ahl al-Bayt. So what, insha'Allah, I'll be doing every day after Salat al-Asr, starting, insha'Allah, from today. We'll look at ways and means of perfecting our fast, maybe for the next two or three days. And thereafter, every day, we'll do tafsir of the Holy Quran. I will take a verse and, insha'Allah, try to look at the commentaries of that particular verse from the teachings of Ahlul Bayt, alayhi salatu was salam. As we mentioned last night, this is the month of the Holy Quran. And there is no better discussion than to discuss the Holy Quran. Quran is an ocean. One will never finish discussing it and will never finish learning it. So it's good. Every day, inshallah, we look at a verse, you know, and try to reflect on that particular verse. Today, as I mentioned, let's look at some of the ways and means of perfecting our fasts. And I think the best way to do so is to look at the sermon of our beloved prophets. Our scholars always remind us of the importance of this beautiful sermon which was rendered by our beloved prophet on the last Friday of the holy month of Shaban. What I will suggest Mu'minin and Mu'minat to do if you've not done it, find time and go through this powerful sermon. Find time. It is in English, it is in Urdu, it is in Pharisee. Even today there are audios of this sermon. Listen to the sermon. Go through the sermon. You will definitely appreciate the recommendations of our beloved prophets on how to conduct ourselves in the holy month of Ramadan. The sermon, Mu'minin and Mu'minat, are suggestions of our beloved Prophet on how to approach the holy month of Ramadan. Who better to tell us what to do in this month than the holy Prophet? So the sermon is not just the virtues or the fadail of the holy month of Ramadan. It's way greater and bigger than the virtues of the holy month of Ramadan. is to tell you, do A, B, C, D. If you are able to do it correctly within the holy month, then inshallah, 
you will be one of the successful graduates or the graduates of the holy months of Ramadan. So today, let us look at some of the suggestions of our beloved prophet. He, sallallahu alayhi wa suggested two major action plans in this khutbah. First one is spiritual action plans. How do we conduct ourselves spiritually in the holy month of Ramadan? And then the second one is the social action plan. How do I relate to you? You as my family member in the holy month of Ramadan. How do I relate to you? You as my friend in the holy month of Ramadan. How do I relate to needy and poor? So that's the second block of action plan suggested by our beloved prophet. So today let's look at the spiritual plan. We all know why we fast. So we don't need to remind ourselves of why do we fast. Prophet explained that also. And numerous traditions of Ahl al-Bayt highlight on why we fast. But prophets in this sermon want us to be in a certain state of mind, if you like. One state of mind is al-awda in Allah. You have to be in a state of returning to Allah. Returning to Allah simply means what? Feeling the presence of Allah. Feeling that spark. It may not be throughout the day. But it's crucial. That always remind yourself. That in this month. If nothing at all. I need to try. To have this feeling. Of the presence of Allah. That's one mind. State of mind. Rather the holy prophet. Want us to have. You have to be in that mood. The second state of mind our beloved prophet wants us to be is what? It's my fast and your fast to be what? A soul hakiki. True fasting. <clears throat> Not just fasting. Tascolas always highlight you have three forms of fasting. First one is soul umum. Fasting of the general public. It simply means abstinence from food, water, and family during the day. I do not eat. You do not eat. That's so much. Yes, you may get reward for that. But that's a general way of fasting. Second way of fasting is what? They call it Sawm al Special way of fasting. Whereby in addition to abstaining from food and water, you know it very well. Just a reminder really. Each and every part of your body fasts. So you do not gossip. Because it's easy to gossip. Especially when a person is used to that. You do not become hypocritical. This year, fast. You do not listen to haram. It's easy to listen to haram while you are fasting. If you don't guard yourself against evil. This eye fast. You do, it's easy. I've got my phone with me. I can easily watch. It's easy. So that's some of the khusus. Otherwise, if you remain... Only abstinence from food and water. Excuse my word. What's the difference between you and others who do dry fast? The third one is Sawmul Hakiki or Sawmul Khusus Al Khusus. Extra special way of fasting. The Sawmul Arifin. It's not the only abstinence from food, water, family, or each and every part of body fasting. Your thinking and imagination fast. 
You don't even imagine evil, let alone doing it. You don't imagine backbiting, let alone doing it. You don't imagine gossiping or gossip, let alone doing it. You don't imagine watching something unlawful. That should I watch? I should not watch. Should I watch? No. You don't even do that. You know, on the first day we make it up. Allahumma ja'al siyami siyama sa'imin. Scholars, when they explain the meaning of siyama sa'imin, they said it refers to sawm al khusus al khusus. That you're asking Allah, make my fast to be among the fast of those who fast. Here, we're talking of sawm al khusus al khusus. The type of a fast whereby your thinking, your thoughts, your imagination also fast. It needs effort, meaning and movement. It doesn't happen overnight. It requires determination. It is definitely doable. Because Allah has given us the potential. But if you do not embark on that journey, you will not get there. So in conclusion, what are the plans, spiritual plans? If you read the khutbah, you'll find these plans. And I'll just mention them, the glossaries. Then we think about it and see what we can make out of it. Number one, the Holy Prophet taught us, pay special attention to your daily obligatory prayers. Your wajibat, your wajib namaz, pay Special attention to it. Work on it. Seek to perfect it. If it is not on time, strive to always make it on time. Inculcate that in this month. Sounds simple. But it moves mountains. If it is on time, try to do it congregationally. If possible. Perfect your obligatory prayers. That's one. And you have tradition even from the prophets. Anyone who offers one obligatory prayer in this holy month of Ramadan, you are given the reward of offering 70 obligatory prayers in other months. Seek to perfect it. It's so important. That's first spiritual action plan. Second spiritual action plan, optional prayers. Now I feel, in other months, one may not do it, but why not in the holy month? Why? Why not? If nothing at all, Salatul Layl is crucial, it's important. This not month, business as usual. It's completely different month. And narration tells us, whoever offers an optional prayers in this month, it becomes bara'at minanar for that person. It's a shield over the fire of hell for the person who offers it. So that's number two, optional prayers. If those during the day are difficult, the ones we do during the day, like before Zohar, after, uh, before answer, night prayers, try. Or namaz of shafi and water. At least. At least. No. Those optional prayers, nawafil, of every day or every night in the holy month of Ramadan. But offer some optional prayers. That's number two. Number three, du'as. Du'a. Alhamdulillah, we do a lot of du'as. Do even more. In your own way. Because Rasulullah tells us the best time to make dua is during salat, isn't it? But dua is important. Then the next one, Kira'atul Quran. Recitation of the Holy Quran. When Prophet said, anyone who recites a verse in this month will be given the reward of completing the entire Quran. So have a plan. 
And then the next one, prophet said what? Tulu sujud. Prolong your prostration in this month. Meaning after salah, before salah, go into sajida. Seek divine intervention. At the end of the day, sajida is the summary of salat, isn't it? And then the last but certainly not the least, a lot of salawats. A lot of salawats on our beloved prophet and his blessed family. So these are some of the spiritual plans suggested by the Holy Prophet. Now you as a mu'min and mu'mina, look at these plans and ask yourself, what do I do? How do I go? You know your circumstance. I know my circumstance. My circumstance is that I can recite one verse every day of the Holy Quran, for example. My circumstance is that I can offer only two rak'at every night before Fajr. My circumstance is that every night before I sleep, I'll be able to recite a few lines of du'a at Tawbah, for example. Or du'a Makarim al-Akhlaq, for example. Or du'a Abu Hamza al for example. So you know your circumstance. Take a paper and a pen, write. These are what I'm going to do. And stick it somewhere in your bedroom or somewhere in your house. And try to follow it. You will see the wonders of Allah. Wa akhir da'wana. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Salawat. Allahumma salla ala Muhammad. If there is any question, inshallah, we have it to answer. Yes, Mullah. Yes, three, three. Yeah, three. There are three. Yeah, not four. So maybe I said four. So there are three: Saumul Umum, Saumul Khusus, and Khusus Al Khusus. Ahsan. Yes. Yes. Now. And once off. Why the difference? Why won't it be just one of those? Ahsan Tom. So good question. Regarding last night, Majlis. We mentioned Inzal and Tanzil. Why both? Why not one? Should be just one revelation of the Holy Quran. Why using two terminologies? The response is here. <coughs> See, we all believe Allah sent down the Holy Quran to our beloved prophets on the night of Qadr. But question. Which year, which date, and when? This was before the entire mission took serious shape in Mecca and Medina. You realize each and every verse of Quran, one way or the other, directly or indirectly, it has a reason for revelation. But the Quran which was sent down to our beloved prophet, that time there wasn't any reason for revelation. There wasn't any reason for revelation. Typical example, Kat Sami Allah Kaulati to Jadiluka fi Zojiha wa Tashtaki ila la lady came complaining about her husband to the Prophet. This only happened later, and Allah revealed. So therefore, what Allah did is what? He gave him the realities. As I mentioned, the skeleton. It's like you hire someone, a contractor, you know, to build your mosque or your house, first the architect will give the design. That's the skeleton, isn't it? And then later, the builders will come, the contractor will start fitting in everything. So that's how. In usul, Islamic legal theory, so they've got something they call al-qadiyatul haqiqiya. Qadiyatul haqiqiya means what? Yani Allah before, he sent prophet, Quran, everything. The design was there. In bulk. And then he brought them down and then he gave them how to ensure that the design is stationed properly. It's like you want to build a school. You conduct or you undertake your feasibility study. You don't say, now I've got only 10 students now who are ready to register. So I'm going to build this school for only 10 who are currently available. Obviously, you're going to have a big projection to say, you know what? I'm going to do it in future. So you, those 10 
obviously they will help you to have your kadia hakikia but then you cannot only limit the, the, the places for only 10 so Allah tabarak wa ta'ala he said you know what I give you everything you nazala bihi ar-ruhul amin he said ala kalbika litakuna min al-munzirin bi lisani arabiyyin mubin you know I sent it to your heart and then later on and of course Quran also Allah even mentioned la tuharrik bihi lisanaka lita'jala bihi inna alayna jama'ahu wa qur'ana fa iza karanahu fattabi qur'ana summa inna alayna bayana scholars when they examine this mufassirin of Quran they said Allah says this ayah that don't be in a hurry to recite it his compilation and recitations are on us don't be in a hurry when on the night of Qadr we're going to send them to you one after the other that's why later we have Makki and Madani now last one and then inshallah ah no no so as I mentioned first night of Qadr everything was sent from Lawhil Mahfuz protected tablet divine tablet so when Quran was in Lawhil Mahfuz even to the heart of the Prophet it was languageless it had no language. It's a reality. Because Allah says, Inna anzalna Quran in Arabia. It was only when it came down here, it became Arabic. Otherwise, there, it had no size. How is it? Nobody knows. It was not buying at the fatain between two covers. No. Anzalna Quran in Arabia. It's haqaiq, it's a reality only. And then from there, Allah moved it to the heart of the Prophet on the night of Qadr. That's why the night of Qadr is so powerful. And then later on, Mecca, Medina, 23 years. 23 years. Because he lived in Mecca, he lived in Medina. 23 years. So within a period of 23 years, Allah kept revealing one after that. Many times people would come to the Prophet and ask a question. And he would keep quiet, waiting for the revelation to come. Because layan tiku anil hawa in huwa illa Oh, definitely. In fact, you have a, you know, Ayatollah Jawadi Amul has some discussions on that. He expounded looking at the possibilities of Laylatul Qadr. He said that Laylatul Qadr definitely was there even before. But then obviously in real sense, in a physical way, Allah gave it to our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi